All right, folks, it's time for a few camera basics. I know that may seem a little strange with a very advanced camera and probably a very advanced crowd, but we just want to make sure that everyone's fully up to speed on some of the simple things. We're going to talk about the mirrorless format, sensor size, a few of the primary controls, and getting our file format set correctly for this camera. All right, first off, this is a mirrorless camera. This is the current style of cameras without a mirror of the single lens reflex. We have interchangeable lenses, and in those lenses is an aperture unit on this camera. So each of the lenses has their own aperture, one way of controlling the light coming in. From there, light comes into the image sensor. Now this does have a shutter unit that has a first curtain and a second curtain. Now normally when you view through the camera, the first shutter curtain is open so that you can see either on the LCD monitor or on the EVF what your lens is focused on. Now, when it comes time to actually take a photo, let's take a look at what happens with the shutter. The first shutter closes so that the sensor can prepare to capture the image, and then it opens, and this is your image capture for that brief moment in time, and then the second shutter curtain closes and then returns the view to the monitor and the viewfinder. Now, this is the physical shutter working in the camera, and there are the options for electronic shutter, and electronic front curtain shutter in the camera. And I will talk about those in due time, I believe in section four on the drive, because uh, there's a lot more going on there than I have shown here, but this is kind of the basics to understand how it works. And those are the fundamental parts about a mirrorless camera and how it works. Now, as I mentioned in the previous section, uh, this is a medium format camera, and most of the industry is based on a 35 millimeter film format. And this was a very popular film for a long time. And so now we have a lot of cameras that have what are known as full frame sensors. It's kind of the industry standard and it's the way we refer to a lot of information. Now, Fuji makes a whole line of APS-C cameras which fit into this crop factor of 1.5. That's the entire Fujifilm X system, which is a great system, lots of lenses, lots of cameras, very good system unto itself. There are other camera companies that make smaller sensors and smaller cameras and lenses and so forth. And we're not going to get into it, but they're out there and they're good for what they do. Now, this particular camera uses a medium format sensor that is roughly 44 by 33 millimeters in size. And so it's going to have kind of a reverse crop factor of 0.79 when you're trying to calculate what lenses look like here versus a full frame or 35 millimeter format. Something we'll talk a little bit more about when we get into the lens sections on this class. All right, the primary controls that we're gonna be using on this camera, let's cover these. First up is the on and off. When you turn the camera on, the camera goes through an automatic sensor cleaning system. There's a ultrasonic vibration that vibrates a little screen, essentially glass plate in front of the sensor to knock dust off the sensor. This will do a pretty good job but eventually you're likely to get dust on the sensor that you'll need to either use a rocket blower or some other sort of sweeping system to get off. And I'll mention that later on in the class as well. The camera has dials. Now these dials also double as buttons. So the front command dial is also a button that you can push in uh, to change the function of it. And this is something we'll talk about as it controls various features on the camera. We also have a rear command dial, but this is also a button. So there's things that you can do by turning these dials and different things that you can do by pushing in on them. And that will change depending on what mode you are on the camera. The menu button is also our OK button. So if you want to go into the menu, you press this button. But also if you want to confirm a setting, this is where you can press the OK button. You can also press in the middle of the focus stick for OK but it's also used for navigation. And as I said before, sometimes your finger doesn't hit it right. You think you're pressing OK when you're actually just changing the direction on it. And uh, just be aware that you can potentially make that mistake. And sometimes it's a little safer to hit that menu OK button. Now the camera also has a touch screen that you can use for a lot of aspects, but not everything in the camera. So you can move your focusing point around. You can select items in the quick menu but you can't select items in the actual menu itself. And so realize it's uh, 
kind of your standard Fuji touchscreen that works for some, but not everything. Easily one of the most important buttons that you need to have in the right position is the movie stills selector. When you have it set to movies, it's going to change the camera completely over into shooting videos. It's also going to change the menu system. And that's a big part of this class as well. And so we have separate sections on the still menu and separate sections on the movie menu. The vast majority of this class will be with this camera in the stills mode. Uh, and only in the movie section and in the movie menu sections are we going to be flipping this over into the movie mode. And so just generally keep it in the stills mode unless we talk about it, moving it over to the other side for those sections. All right, one of the most important settings that you need to get right early on on any camera is getting the image quality set appropriate for what you want and what you're going to do out of the camera. Now, there is a lot of different options in here. The basic set of options is either RAW files or JPEG files. The RAW files are going to give you a lot more information, a lot more color information, detail information. It's going to allow you to work a lot more with rescuing highlights and shadow areas. And in general, it's just going to give you a better quality result, but it's going to require a little bit more work on your part later on. Fuji perhaps is the best manufacturer when it comes to creating great quality JPEGs, as well as giving you a lot of control over those JPEGs. And so if you do want to shoot JPEGs on this camera, I think it's a little bit of a mistake in most cases, but there are plenty of exceptions to that rule for sure. Uh, you can select it in here. So when you go into the image quality setting, first is you're going to have three different options for different JPEG files. Now these are all 102 megapixels in resolution. So the resolution is the same between these. It's the compression level. How much information are they throwing away in order to create a smaller file size? So generally speaking, if you're going to shoot JPEG, you probably want to shoot the highest quality JPEG unless you know that you don't need that. And so if you only need a normal JPEG, well then yes, you can set that and save file space. But if you're a little unsure about what you're going to be doing with the file in the long run, you're probably better off shooting in higher quality. So those are our JPEG options. And then if we jump over to the other side, we have the raw option. And we have one raw option. It's 102 megapixels. And there are going to be some compression options that we're going to talk about uncompressed, lossless, and compressed. And I'm going to show you some details when we get into the menu settings on this. So you can fine tune exactly what type of raw you want as we get into here a little bit later on. But for right now, I would recommend shooting raw on this camera. It's going to give you the greatest file to work with later on, gives you the most options. Now, for some people who have special needs where they want a JPEG and a raw at the same time, there is, of course, the option of shooting a JPEG along with the RAW. And you're going to end up with two files every time you take a single photo. Now, I don't recommend this mode to a lot of photographers because if you're shooting RAW, which is my main recommendation, you can create JPEGs of whatever style you want, whenever you want, later on, of any size you want, with software programs later on after the fact. But that does take time. If you do want an immediate collection of JPEGs, well, then I can see shooting RAW plus JPEGs so that you have a full RAW to work on, but you have a quick JPEG to work with. And so obviously RAW for all your serious shooting, JPEG for other times where it's appropriate for what you're shooting. Now, under both of these, we're going to see some options for fine tuning this. And so with the RAW recording, you can shoot uncompressed, lossless, as well as compressed, as well as 14-bit and 16-bit. And just my quick analysis of it, it's not as much of a difference to most people as you might think when it comes to these raw settings. And so I'm going to go a little conservative and go with some smaller file sizes in my recommendations. But I do have more to say on this and examples to show you later on. When it comes to JPEG, we also have a Hyph option. And Hyph is another compressed format like JPEG. And it's got some advantages to it but it's not as compatible as of the recording of this class. And so I'm going to generally recommend JPEG for most people who are wanting a compressed file of that nature at this point. So raw for most people, JPEG is going to fit some needs for some other people. All right. As I said, we're not going to spend a lot of time on basics, but I wanted to make sure that those are covered so that you're ready for everything else in the class.